Right, lads. Massive game this Sunday. You know, playing a team, a team of Manchester, Man City. And uh, look, titles on a line, potentially according to the narrative. You've got Sky starting the narratives and the previews are dropping and there's predicted lineups and combined 11s, which of course we've never done. Um, and <laughs> look, we, we, we need to talk about this game because look, there's often this debate about Arsenal and do we have to win to prove ourselves and stuff like that, which we've of course discussed on Patreon and YouTube, uh, members for watch uh, on a different podcast. Um, but in terms of this one, we're going to do five things that Mikel Arteta needs to do because of course Mr. Boy, but Mr. Basel, he needs to do five things. Mikel, Mikel Arteta needs to do oh yeah it's your whole brand isn't it game yes but yeah. this is going on on the kind of podcast so five things special. we learned yeah five things we need to do yeah sorry to win this game what does miss what's, what's the first thing that mccartney needs to do we'll go to george first uh he needs to get the press correct um okay. i think uh, in in order to ensure that we are successful in all of our times that we've been successful against manchester city our press has been phenomenal and that means making sure to be zonal when it needs to be and then during certain triggers that everybody does their job and is able to effectively squeeze keep our defensive lines uh tight close together and not give space for um kind of kevin de bruyne to exert influence on the game you let him run uh then arsenal will uh lose <laughs> really that simple for me I, I think that if we're if we're able to have our press down to a science which we have been all season and we've been phenomenal at then i think that uh we will have success in this game Okay, right. That's that's a good first point to start off with. But what's the second point, Alex? What else does Mikel Arteta need to do? What do Arsenal need to do? I think there's something in creating the right level of pressure, motivation, getting the messaging right to the players. Th this is something that, you know, fans will have their own opinions and will think, oh, we need to do this, we don't need to do that, we need to prove this, we don't need to prove that, whatever. This mean, might mean this for the tight race, whatever. But I really think Mikel can go in there with some very, very clear messages that will be ringing in the ears of the players as they go out, feeling very, very confident. We have beaten these guys twice this season already. So we don't need to, we're not going out there to prove that we're better than, that we're better or worse or not as good or whatever. We've beaten them. We know we are as, as good as them, if you know, if not better on our day. So we're not going out there to prove ourselves in, in, as, as a football team. We might be going out there to put a message right to the world to change the narrative about Arsenal. That's something that we can we can lean on. And we can also say to them, look, guys, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to show who you are, to write your story, write your narrative about this season, to win a title, potentially, in this era. That is huge. That is absolutely huge. It's something that Mikel can, you know, re I, th I feel can really lean into. We've seen it, you know, I think some, I read an article earlier that was something like Mikel used clips of All or Nothing to like, like they like showed the players some clips of All or Nothing when they bottled the title, when they bottled top four at Newcastle or whatever it was. He's used all sorts of things. Why can't he use newspaper clippings, all that sort of stuff? I think it, it, it's, it might feel small, but that level of motivation going into the game to go and sort of create that us versus the world thing. I think the fans feel that sort of, oh, everyone's against Arsenal, everyone wants Arsenal to fail. Lean into it. Lean into it. Why not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Massive, massive. The third point I'm going to make of what Mikel Arteta needs to do is start Kai Havertz, which I expect him to do anyways, by the way, but I think it's important to start him up front because of how we've beaten City this year and, you know, the game at the Community Shield, he caused so many issues to Stones and I think Diaz as well. And of course, the game at the Emirates, he came off the bench to get the assist for the winner. Starting Kai up front because of what he gives Arsenal right now and how he maximises our wide forwards, it, it's very, very important. And it's, it's funny we have this conversation because we, we spoke about this on, on Patreon as well, but Earlier last year, or earlier this season, if you had Jesus fully fit and available and Havertz available, we'd go Jesus starts any day of the week. But now we're sitting there and most fans of the comments will disagree and they'll say start Havertz up front because we've seen him grow in confidence, grow in form. Of course, he went on to an international break and scored another goal against France, playing up front once again. So he's, he's caught form in the right time. And you, you often hear Chelsea fans talk about March Madness Kai. Um, well, we're, we're still in March. And we're playing City in March as well, just about. March 31st, so yeah, still yeah, counts. Just about, just about. So unless his time zone is different in a, a different part of the world, mm. he should be able to produce um, against, against Man City. And of course, look, we've seen it this season and we've beaten them twice because Kai's played a part. If we can make it three wins in a row or even get a, a point and Kai plays a massive part, I think it goes a massive stead and it will give Arsenal fans a clearer vision of why Mikel signed Kai's profile because fans talk about, you know, we should have signed Madison instead or someone like that, but that's not a habit. It's a different, different type of player. And I think starting Kai up front and also look let's not forget last year you know we, we 
we win it where, when we played them at the Emirates, at the Etihad, you had Haaland going long and, you know, Edison going long to Haaland, knocking it down. We can do that to Kaya now as well. We saw it in the game at the Emirates. Was it Tom Yasu's ball? Or it was a party's ball towards Tom Yasu and then you had Van Havertz as well. So different style of play, but I think Mikel needs to start Kaya up front. George, what is the fourth thing? The man, the myth, the legend, Declan Rice. He's been talking a lot during the international break and that Yes. Key matchup between him and Rodri is going to decide this match. Um, you know, he's been talking about having to go to the Etihad, which we know is really tough. But if you want to get past the barrier of Arsenal being labeled stuff, you have to go there and win. We have to show the steeliness and character to prove we can be one of the best. Those are some strong words and they have very big implications about the key matchups here. And, you know, I think Rodri is the heartbeat of Manchester City. And when you look at it, Declan Rice's ability to keep him from turning and from playing forward is going to be key, particularly in that press, forcing him to recycle the ball back to his back line and having City unable to progress through the center of the pitch is going to be key. And he and that ability to really meet them with intensity is what um, I think Arsenal will need in order to win this game. Um, beyond that, I think no stones is going to be detrimental to Manchester City if he isn't there um, for many reasons. Um, you know, chief among them, their ability to progress and give the ball to Rodri. And, um, you know, in the last game, Ed, Kevin De Bruyne kind of floated between both Shaka and Thomas Partey. And Pep used this dual six system. So without John Stones, whoever that partner is to Rodri, it, it's going to be key uh, that Arsenal are able to control um, that secondary pivot option. Because I think whether it's Rico Lewis or Mateo Kovacic, Pep is going to look for a physical presence that can complement this idea of Declan Rice snuffing Rodri out of the game. And that's where um, I think that Arsenal are going to have success. Did you, what did you guys make of that quote that Rice had? I think it was it Stones or Walker you mentioned. You mentioned oh, Stones. Stones, it was the fact Stones. That we're going we're gonna to play them and, and Stones he didn't know. I mean, Stones yeah, might not play yeah. anymore. Maybe Karma got him there. Um, but like, but like, <laughs> Just if, saying, if, if that was a, playing, that was a Ben you, White quote. If that was yeah. a Ben White quote. Do you, do you think that was on purpose or do you think it was just like a little ingest? I didn't see... I, I often think with press conference stuff, I'd need to watch it because I don't know whether Rice was like slightly tongue-in-cheek or not. Look, I, I'm sure the players will be playing mind games. These guys are we we you know we might not want to admit it but we've not been in this situation many times they have they've been around the block many many times they they and i'm sure they'll be played they've played all those tricks through 18 19 20 21 at the England camps on jordan henderson and trent and stuff and they've played these games before so let's expect it let's enjoy it the same way that you guys eye rolled to that question is i'm sure the way declan rice responded to john stones when he said that yeah. which i believe was yeah. that i think it was all honest I'm sure it was no. but Let's yeah. not forget they've they've got a history of Alex made a point there about maybe Trent and, and, and Henderson. But even I think last year there was City players coming up to, to Saka and saying, Look, the title's yours. How yeah. does it how does it feel? So yeah. yeah, you're right, they play the mind games and uh, mm -hmm. it'll be important to see how the Arsenal players respond. Alex, what is the fifth thing? The final one. Use of the bench. I think if okay. if it is gonna be the game, the well, first, firstly, let's look at our options off the bench. If we do have a fully fit squad, there is every possibility we have Ramsdale, he, he has said before, we might change the game. Um, we might have Urien Timber, Jakub Kivior, Tommy Asu, Zinchenko, Partey, Smith Rowe, Vieira, uh, Jesus, Nketiah, Trossard, Nelson, all those mm -hmm. potential options to come off the bench. If it is to be the game that we expect it to be, you know, I think we said this on the on the um, other podcast, you can go through round or over teams. I can't see City trying to go over us in the same way they did uh, the Etihad last season because they know the matchup is now Gabriel and Saliba, not Gabriel and the other guy. So um, he, he must not be named. So um, yeah, you know, I, I can't see them tr trying to go as direct as, as they did last season. And um, I think Pep favours the central area. So I think he's going to try and play through us. There might be a time in the game where we go, okay, we're lacking a bit of progression on our left. Let's pull Zinchenko inside so the winger follows him and create a bit of space in the same way that he always does that. Or is it, uh, we need someone to, you know, access the box in a different way than Martinelli is. Let's bring Reese Nelson on. Or is it, you know, with Javi Vieira, we're lacking a bit of rhythm in the final, final ball third, in the half space. Fi final you know. ball. And there's, there's, we, we think the gaps are there. So using those players and the, their best qualities is going to be so key. And recognising the game for what it is and going, okay, 
they're committing more men in, in their in their first f- phase of their press than we expected. There's a bit more time and space in behind. Can we put Havertz and Rice up to play a bit more direct? Whatever it might be. However, we, we know how adaptable we can be. So I think doing that and making sure we get those substitutions right um, is going to be huge. I, if I was Mikel, I wouldn't plan them. I really wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd wait. I'd wait and see the game. You know, you have ideas in your head of what you might do. Of course. But I wouldn't. You know, I, I've, I've heard him managers say before that they go, yeah, we, we were always going to go sixty minutes to do that. No, wait to see. Wait to see what this game is because it's going to adapt and change a lot over the course of it. It is. It's, it's a very fascinating game. Of course, it's huge as well. There's a lot to talk about in terms of tactics and narratives and all sorts, which we have discussed, available for Patreon members and YouTube members. Which we might have mentioned during right the podcast. Now. I'm not sure we... Yeah, just, just you know, <laughs> you know, the game is the game. Uh, if they want to watch that, they want to watch that. If not, the five things have been said. Now, so falls to Mikel Arte. I wonder if this ends up in the after dressing room. You know, and Mikel goes, this, these are the five things. If it does, do. okay, here we go. Here's the last one. If it does, you have one sentence to say to the boys. Go. Win. Boys, if you play for the name on the front of the shirt, the fans <laughs> will remember the All name right, on Ted the back. So, uh, <laughs> listen, that is that is the video there, there, and we will see you very soon on the interaction. I don't get a sentence after. Uh, what's your sentence going to be? Guys, Pep's bold. Touch balls. Pep's oh, bold, guys. Brilliant. brilliant. That, that's definitely going to inspire them. Right, let's let's go for it, lads. Now, now we've not made it into the dressing room just because of that. He's gone right. It's not happening. That's 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 the video there. We'll see you on Sunday after a massive game. Peace. Peace. Peace.